What is up and welcome to the Ricky Reset. Hold on a second, y'all. Wait a minute. Hold on my tech. Give me two seconds. We'll be back. All right, friends, let's kick this off again. What is up and welcome to the Ricky Reset. I am Andrea Fitzfitzgerald, and I'm going to be your host this evening. Now, you may be wondering, what the heck is a Ricky Reset? Well, friends, it would be an evening just like this, except your girl would be stressed the hell out because I could not manage my class. And quite frankly, I can figure out this whole teaching thing. So what we do right here on the Ricky Reset is to provide you as a new teacher with practical tools, tips, and strategies to help you stay in the game. I am the professional learning the PD that you need um, because my goal is very simple, to help new teachers stay in the game. And not quit because a lot of times new teachers quit too soon because they're just not getting the support they need. So that is me. That is what I do. And so I'm looking forward to us collaborating today. So today, friends, we are going to talk about PTP pedagogy. PTP pedagogy. You say, well, what is that? What the heck is a PTP pedagogy? So as I was thinking about this idea, I was reflecting on this. This book I read many, many years ago, Relentless by Tim Grover. And he is the trainer of um he was the trainer of michael jordan and so in this book he refers to this he says there's three types of people in the world you got a cooler a cleaner and a closer and a cooler is someone they just do the job as intended like they just they just they just do what they do right then a closer they are a bit like they are a little bit more effective like they're they're elite so they are above average. They are better than a cooler. But then a cleaner is somebody like they just they set the stage of how you do the job. Like they just they just fire out here like you want the ball in their hand at the end of the game. Like Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan cleaners. It, it, it's, it's like it don't matter what you put in front of me. Like I'm about to go out here and I'm about to get these buckets. And so. um. As I was thinking about that, I said, I think the same is true as a teacher. When we talk about what's a ptp -er, um, we're talking about a primetime player. So Dick Vitale used an analogy. Um, he's a, he's a, a sportscaster. And he says, oh, you're a diaper dandy or a ptp -er. So a diaper dandy is a, um, is a, um, a freshman that's really, really talented. And I'm imagining if you're entering the profession, you've probably been pretty talented. You're pretty smart, probably got um, pretty good grades. And so here you are as a, as a new teacher. So you are very skilled at this point. Um, as far as your knowledge, like your skill set, like you wouldn't have got the role if you didn't have a skill set. Just like when a freshman gets in college, you don't get the scholarship unless you already have a, a track record of being pretty freaking good. But a ptp -er, i.e. a cleaner, as we just talked about, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, primetime player, games on the line. I know I can go to the game. I know they can get the job done. And so what I want to help you do as a new teacher, I want you to strive for that PTP pedagogy, right? That primetime player pedagogy. Because let's be clear, you know, I talk relationships. I say it all the time. I say, oh, you got to connect the kids. You got to be a relationship. But let's be clear, folks. You still got to be able to teach. You got to be able to teach. And so as, as, I, as I often say, I was so privileged. I had some, some straight up cleaners all around me, like uh, Miss, Miss Holmes, Miss Reed, Miss Dixon, coldest teachers out here. I promise y'all, listen, these folks could, excuse my friends, teach their ass off. Like they was that good. So, um, so I want to help you get that. Like, I think that a lot of times that like, no, if, if you don't have anyone teach you how to teach, then it can be very challenging. Like, you know, because I remember when I first went in there, I didn't know what I was doing. I just, you know, I, I did the best I could, but um, I was so blessed and so lucky to have people around me who were really freaking good. Like, it was like Chicago Bulls over here. I was like, okay, I can say it didn't matter who, who stepped into the role, like they were going to be effective because they had greatness all around them. So um, I think it's two things that you need to be a PTP. Number one, a winning mindset, because that's the thing about Kobe, about um, MJ, is that it doesn't matter what's in front of them. Like, I'm still going to handle it. I do these, I do this embodiment meditation in the morning. And, and that's what I tell myself. I say anything in front of me, 
I can handle it. I can handle because it's so hard. Like this meditation is so hard. It is so painful in my body, but it reminds me that there's always more in me. Like it doesn't matter what's standing in front of me. I might be frustrated for a minute, but you know what? I'm going to figure it out. That's how I feel about it. I'm going to figure it out. So, so having a winning mindset, you are going to face, cha- face challenges. And I think that's the hardest part about being a brand new teacher is that, that, um, we don't understand. I think a lot of times new teachers don't understand, like, it's not a matter if the challenges come, it's a matter of when, like they coming, it doesn't mean like, it don't matter who you are. You figure that you, as you go, like I I often tell people how I learned to use power school. I called inside of my own classroom, y'all, but having that winning mindset, because I did want to quit that day. I really did, but it's like being willing to get back up. So let me find a solution. Don't let the little stuff keep you from being successful. And I still remember that from um, Ms. Dickinson, um, on our um, rookie reset when I had them on one time. That's what she said. She said, you got to have a winning mindset. And I think a lot of times um, it starts with what you believe. If you don't believe it's possible, it can't happen. So you got to believe that, that, that even if a challenge comes in front of you, you can handle it. Like it don't matter. I can handle anything in front of me. So, and then the the next piece is, this is the PT pedagogy. This one, you just got to be able to teach your ass off. Like that's it. You gotta you got to be able to teach ass off. And so I want to teach you how to do that today, the PTP pedagogy. And so this is what I say when I when I talk about what uh PTP pedagogy, these are the moves that you make that are imperative to be a great teacher. Essential. Because this is a deal. You know, anybody can get a curriculum, you can get textbook, you can anybody can do that. But it's all about the person that has has the curriculum. So it's kind of like, to me, I'm going to give you a prime example. Colorado, for the last year, they won one game. They won one game. They have been terrible for a very long time. But you know what? They put somebody in that seat, i.e. Deion Sanders, and these folks out here killing it this year. Because it's not just a, it's a football program, but he is elevated because it's who they put in that seat. So it's not just, I have the curriculum in front of me. Oh, great. I have this great curriculum. Well, it's the person using the curriculum that can help this thing come to life. So, you know, I want us to be Deion Sanders out here. You know, I often say that, um, or not often say, but I, I think of um, John Calipari, man. Like he, when I think of like someone who, you know, Memphis people probably going to kill me when I say this because, you know, he bounced out on us. but. But I think that he is a person that does it. Like he goes to programs and he makes them, he elevates them to what to more than what they are, right? Like he was at UMass and I think they went to the final four. He was in Memphis. We went to the championship. He was in he's in Kentucky. They won championships. So it's it's the person in the seat that makes the stuff come to life. So um I even see old people sometimes and leaders that are like, oh, we got the right curriculum. Yeah, but how are we going to support our teachers in executing on this? So I want to share with you four things that you can do to make that curriculum come to life so that you can, you can get in there and get those, those for your students. So I think the first one is clear communication. So it's one thing um, to be able to, you know, follow the script, dot, dot, dot. But you want to be able to explain things in a really clear way. So I'll give you a prime example. When I when I first became a teacher, I um I was I think I was teaching equations or something, and y'all that thing was so unclear. And I, I was like, oh yeah, the kid they got it, you know. Like I explained it that it was not clear because I got to end the lesson. It was like it was like maybe two kids that got it, two out of thirty, something like that. They 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 didn't get it because my explanation wasn't clear. Like I didn't, I didn't have a clear way of explaining in a way in which they can understand because I thought I was like, oh, well, shoot. I mean, how it's equations. How hard can it be? You do this, you do that. Boom. Let's move on. But you got to be able to explain it in a clear way where people can relate to it. And that's honestly, that's why I really love analogies. The reason why I, I strive to explain things in a really clear way is because when I, um, I had great math teachers until my senior year, my, um, my calculus teacher left. And so we had another teacher and I was lost the whole second half of the year. I mean, I think I got a B or A out of class, but I didn't know what the hell was going on because he didn't explain it clear. So 
that's why I really love analogies. Like one way to uh, make things clear for students, I like to use stories, make it relatable, things that they understand. But, um, you know, um, I lost my train of thought, it'll come back. But um, just, just making it relatable and very clear and concise, you know? Um, I've been in, uh, I've been in uh, classes before. This one class I went in a few years ago, it's like a while back. And, um, you know, I, I went in the class and you know what happened? He explained something and then you know what ended up happening? He was going to every student and re-explaining again. Like he probably explained the same thing probably like 10 times, but that's because that initial explanation was not clear. So that first explanation, you want to be very, you want to be very clear in how you communicate. And, and one of the one of the keys to communication is considering your audience. Because that's the one thing that I've learned in relationships is that you could say all day, this is just how I am. This is just how I talk. Hey, but guess what? It's another side, of, it's another person on the side of the side of that communication. You want them to hear you so that you can solve the problem. So you have to speak in a way in which the other person can hear you. And that's the key about communication is considering who it is you're speaking to what interests them what do they care about use that in your explanation now the next one is checks for understanding are the kids in the car are the kids in the car so um they say a great driver checks their rearview mirror every two to three minutes and you want to do the same thing in your class because um you know you know what i used to do i say everybody understand that should be my checks for understanding that's be my checks for understanding so everybody understand you know what the kids you say mm -hmm. yeah miss fisher i understand and you know what i get to end that lesson i ain't understand so you want to it's the same thing in your class right like you want to be checking every few every few minutes to see to make sure the kids in the vehicle like y'all still with me we we still going the same direction we still we st we still in there and in the next couple of weeks i'll talk a little bit more in depth about how to how do i prepare for that how do i do that but you want to check for understanding so and 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 one thing i will add about check for understanding you also you want to make sure you're getting physical evidence of what your students know physical evidence because everybody understands thumbs up thumbs down i dig those i think those are cool but you will have actual paper like this is what this i see exactly what you did you know um i love the whiteboards that was a great way because i could see specific like they understand this they don't got this part they got this little piece i'm gonna make this adjustment but physical evidence of what they know especially in math class you want to see that so checks for understanding the next one is student engagement so um you want to think about like i said you have the curriculum but how am I going to bring this to life? So I really love instructional routines. You know, as a math teacher, I really, um, I really like the math language routines. They are built for math and students can have authentic conversations because you want to think about like, how can I, how can I bring this, bring this curriculum to life? How can I make this interesting? How can I have them engage in an activity that is going to drive towards the goal of the lesson? So I really love instructional routines for that. How how can I how can I make it come to life? So you just want to think about that. And then the last thing I'll say is this to me is probably the most important piece, I think, of, of that PTP pedagogy. Because you can have clear communication, you can have great checks for understanding, you can plan the best engagement activities and routines. But if you don't have this, friends, this year it's gonna be real hard. And you say, Well, what's that, Vince? And it's what I call that good old teacher pizzazz. Well, what's teacher pizzazz? So I think it's two pieces of teacher pizzazz. One is um, you bringing your own sauce and flavor to teaching, but it's also creating buy-in. It's creating buy-in. Why do I care about this, Miss Fitzgerald? Why am I gonna do this? What, what is this? Well, you know, because if I'm not invested, then what are we talking about? And, and you know what, I've always said that, but you know what, let's talk about the science of it all. So uh, in the book, Culture Response of Teaching the Brain, she says, listen, she said, this, she said, this is really what happens. Um, if students don't give a, she said, well, let me back up. She said, you gotta make kids give a damn about it. 
She said, you got to make kids give a damn about it because she said, if they don't give a crap about what you're talking about, you know what it is? It's like Charlie Brown. Want, 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 want. Like if people don't, if the students don't care about what it is, they're not bought in, they're not invested, then it's just like the want, 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 want. So, um, so it's figuring out what is that proposition value? And that's, and that's really anybody, right? Like um, you, me, kids, adults, it doesn't matter. We operate on one station. W I I F M. <laughs> What's in it for me? And so we want to figure out like what is that, what is that value proposition that I can offer them where they'll be invested in this? And so I'm going to give you a prime example of Teach Pizzazz and how that comes to life. So um a few years ago, I was on a I was, I was, on, I was on a walkthrough and there was this one class. And the students were quiet, like they were compliant, they did what the teacher asked. And so essentially, this teacher was a cooler, they did what they were supposed to do. They did the job, the students weren't disruptive, they did what I mean, they did what the teacher asked, they did the problems, da da da. But this other class we went into, when I tell you, Every time this lady asked a question, them hands was like this. I'm talking about, they was like, come on, Miss, 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 Miss. I mean, I'm talking about, them folks were so invested. Like, you couldn't, I was like, man, I was like, man, this, I was like, this class was, it was like hype. The energy, the vibe, like, it was just, it was on 10, you know? It was, it was, it was a vibe. And so um, I go outside the classroom and I said, and, and I was like, man, I was like that energy in that class. I was like, wow, those kids are really invested. And he said, he said, you know, a good portion of those classes are they're repeating this grade again, like that. This is they're doing this class again. Couldn't tell. The teacher had that teacher pizzazz. She had the teacher pizzazz. She had them folks invested. You hear me? That was ready. She had the flavor. She brought her sauce. She she was being herself. It was authentic. It was just the energy, you know, because sometimes, you know, um, if you bored, you know, I always say if they, if you bored, they bored too. So you got to bring that, that sauce, that energy, that vibe, like, yes, I'm going to do this. So yes, teach a pizzazz. This It's like adding your own sauce to the teaching, you know what I'm saying? And you're getting the people invested in it. So, um, you know, that's why I always say self-awareness is so important. Like, um, I'll close out with this in, in terms of teacher possess. So um, this, is, this is not about you have to be like a motivational speaker or anything like that. This is really just about you being yourself and getting kids invested in that. So um, a few years ago, um, I, I took this assessment, Welcome to the Jungle, and there's four different animals. So you have a lion. This person is very driven. You have a flamingo. I mean, let me say a lion is fast paced uh people oriented or no task oriented so this person is usually um like very results driven then you have an eye which i'm a high eye also um high eye high d so very people oriented very fast paced um usually like um uh, this person is usually like kind of bubbly kind of all you know kind of excited stuff like that and then you have um a chameleon, which is the team oriented person. So they're also people oriented, but they slower pace. They they like to make a decision um, like team based. Like they like to talk it through stuff like that. Like they're okay with uh change, but you know, the loss, the loss of stability is like a big deal to a chameleon. And then you have a turtle. So this person is very detailed, um, very structured. Also, they're they're also similar to a lion because they're very task oriented, but they also are um the slower pace, they like to take their time. And so the fear of a high turtle is making a mistake. And so four teachers I know, four different personalities, very effective, but they all had their good teacher possess. So um, one of them, Miss Reed, she's very, um, she's like a coach, very driven, resource oriented. She gonna be on your head. You know, it's all a lot of love, but she lives it. You, you, you wanna know the truth. You better you better call when you're ready to do something. And she brought that to her class. And then I think I am a high eye. So I was like all over the place. Like I was standing on desk. I like to make it very entertaining, motivational, inspirational. And I brought that to my class. That's my teacher's ass. And so kids were invested in it. 
And then um, Akisha is a, um, she is a chameleon. So she's like very team oriented. So she liked for her class to be, you know, like we family in here, you know, but she also was a turtle. So she liked the structure too. It's got to be clean up in this thing. Okay. Like structure and detail. Um, and then um, Dr. Michelle, she said, listen, I'm not a motivational speaker out here, but she said, you know what? I am very detailed. She was a turtle. So she planned very detailed learning experiences. So kids were super engaged in that. So that was their teacher position. This is not about you being like anybody else. This is about you being you, bringing your sauce to the space. That's a big part of the PTP pedagogy because you can have clear communication. You can check for understanding. You can have engagement strategies, but guess what, boo? If you don't got this teacher position, it's going to be real hard. So that really sets the foundation for everything else to take place. Kids have got to be bought in to do the work. You got to make them give a damn about it. Got to. So thank y'all so much for tuning in. I want to say to you, lost my train of thought. But yes, I want to say to you all, get that PTP pup pedagogy, that prime time player pedagogy. I believe in each one of you. And ask yourself, am I cooler? Do I just do the job? Am I closer? I'm a bit above average. Or am I cleaner? That means I'm elite status out here. Kobe Bryant, MJ, Deion Sanders out here. They make the role. And, and see, the thing about those people, like, once they leave the position, it's so hard to feel because they just so dynamic. And I know that's you, rookie. Now, I know right now you a diaper dandy, but I know all in all, you got that PTP pedagogy. So thank y'all so much for tuning in. Let's get out there this week and do those rookie reset push-ups. And as you go out this week and you try on this new idea, I want you to keep that rookie state of mind. And once that fits, I want you to remember the level up is in the losses. Problems are a privilege. And yes, you might be new to this, new to this idea, new to this role. But I know you're true to this because you're in this moment right now. And I believe in each one of you. Let's get out there this week and do those rookie reset push-ups. And I'm out. We'll be back next week, same time, 5.15 between 515 545 we're gonna be in this thing but i thank y'all so much for tuning in we'll be back we'll talk soon and i'm out